And welcome back to Home Track Heroes here on CW11 covering the uh, absolutely beautiful weather-wise night we had for our BECU uh, driver reunion night presented by uh, Bush Light. And it was so neat to see. There was quite a really a quality mini stock I'll tell you about here. We'll introduce the field to you, and then I got something I got to tell you guys. So they're all yours. All right. Starting in the front row, brought to you by McConey Setup Shop. It's the 10 of Cam Iverson. On the outside, the 20 of Jason Wilson. Next row back, driving the 97 of Nat Barber's car, but it's actually the 29 of Dylan Bewald, brought to you by Puget Sound Auto Repair and Port Orchard. On the outside, the 34 of John Olson Sprints, sponsored by Brandy Hood Promotions. And then we go to the 07 of Zach Bristol in the uh, inside third row, outside of Zach in the number four car, brought to you by Above and Beyond Design and Construction, the four car of Cole Reardon. Back to the 14, Racers Against Child Abuse entry of Colton Price, and outside of Colton in the 521, Leuna Local 292, and uh, J2 Racing Parts sponsored the 521 of Mike Jensen. Sponsored by J2 Racing and John Haynes, it's the 7 of Cassidy Sunholm. Sponsored by Simon & Sons Towing, it's the 16 of Travis Woodward. Brought to you by PRCBD.com, it's the 53 of Lyndon Smith, and rounding out the pack, you're a pace car driver, but tonight driving a BECU mini stock, it's the double zero of Steve Potasic. Yeah, good to have Steve back out here. That that guy has just been so much fun to watch over the years. As they get them wound up, Jason Wilson and Cameron Iverson, the 10 and 20 respectively, are tasked with getting this thing underway, and they do it nicely as Wilson took a deep look down on the inside, and just that, he spins that number 20 car around, and looks like he's going to be hopefully able to get that no unfortunately it didn't make it so we will looks like we may have to rack him back up here as uh, you can see the yellow fly yellow lights flashing and we'll get a couple of different views of it but a kind of a weird start it looked like jason just i don't know if he he didn't didn't look like he missed a shift but something may have just kind of coughed a little bit on that 20 rig as he immediately started heading off to the left and look how many three whites we have yeah, here. Exactly. Everybody's <laughs> trying to avoid the 20 of Jason Wilson. Yeah, but good job, y'all. In the meantime, a lot of three whites, so a lot of great action there in turn number one. Yeah, Mike Jensen right in the middle of that. Colton Price absolutely in the middle of that. Holy smokes, four wide when they're going down there. Zach up Bristol in the 07 had the uh, fine view up on the outside. Let's take another look on this restart. But, boy, it looks like, yeah, see, he... Something happened right there. Did you see the smoke coming out of the back wheels on that number 20 car right before the start finish line? Maybe we'll get another uh, view of it here. Here's Cole Reardon. Here's what he uh, had to deal with. See, right? Yeah, see the smoke come out of it right there? Cole looking off to the side, seeing, oh, man, who's beside me? Can I make it? Yes. Whew. Yeah, just cons gets completely loose. Jason Wilson does there in yeah. turn number one. But uh, Cole Reardon, and now we're on board with the 521 of Mike Jensen See? right behind the four. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, like your right. brakes locked up on it or something. Yeah, just completely goes 90 degrees right yeah. into the dirt in turn number one. Yeah, that's not an obviously a normal restart. So we'll bring the pace car back out there, and we'll get them racked back up. A total restart. And uh, that's why you see Jason Wilson and the 10 of Cameron Iverson up on the top part. One of the absolutely coolest cars that was on display uh, on the tarmac going, as you're heading north down towards the pit was the uh, yellow uh, Bill's Auto Parts restored uh, car by my longtime friend and uh, former boss, Joe McIntosh. And Joe used to run, and I believe he won the championship for the FSCRA in 1972. Joe retires, sells his business, sitting around thinking, man, I want to, I need to rebuild this car. And he didn't rebuild it. He went out and bought another car and just stripped it all out. And, the, and you had a chance to see it. I think it was absolutely stunning a, to, the, to the decal recreation of the car he had in 1972. And uh, it was it was so neat to see. As we see Jason Wilson, he's just having a rough time of it. <laughs> yeah. he, he finally made it a, about two-thirds of the lap and uh, keeps soldiering on. Boy, you got to give respect to a guy like that. That was, uh, that was pretty neat. Dylan Bewald, though, back up front in the 97 is a good side-by-side -side battle as they head out of turn number four. Mike Jensen is another one that's going to kind of fall into, you know, we were talking about in the race earlier between with Ted Lindgren and Mike Marthal. Guys just won a ton of races, had a ton of heat races, good quality podium finishes. And this year, it's just that 
there's something it's kind of a weird dynamic that's going on i know he's trying his whole team we were talking about earlier in the heat race that uh, you know that 521 car looking for answers trying to get some performance back in that thing look at price though on the inside as they go down into turn number one that uh, in the 10 cars out of iverson as they come out of the turn across the line and uh, off they go you know, I was uh, about to say, you know, I don't know what was taking Colton Price so long to be able to get on the lead because we saw in that heat race, he almost immediately went to the head of the pack. And yeah. here it took him about four laps to get out into the front of the pack. But uh, all kidding aside, Colton Price having a great season and able to jump out in front of the 97 car driven by the 29 of Dylan Bewald. And, you know, you were talking about the car earlier that was driven by your boss, Mr. McIntosh. Yes. Right next to it was Dylan Bewald's 29 <laughs> car that was uh, unable to run for this BEC mini stocks had tonight. Had <laughs> Some place to park it. That's right. It yeah. looked, looked awful good just sitting there as we uh, see that. And we want to remind everybody that this segment is brought to you by BECU. Boeing Employee Credit Union believes in people over profit. BECU, altogether different. And we uh, we talked a lot about BECU we tonight, did. but uh, it was so much fun to see just such a big group of people. They were so excited for the Super Stock figure eights. They were so excited for this BECU mini stocks. They, I think every single thing that we said over the loudspeaker and we mentioned BECU, they all cheered and so you hear yeah. 600 people cheering about their company awful fun yeah and and you gotta hand it to a company like that that you know when you try and get all your people together on a saturday night and they just all seem to really enjoy their company and they were having fun and then you know that's what this place is all about it's what it's supposed to be is fun and they proved it in spades so thanks to all the guys from becu that made it out and like Greg said, to cheer on McKenzie, to cheer on this class. Uh, and by the end of the night, those people got a show. I'm telling you what, you're going to see it too as, as this uh, Home Track Heroes keeps rolling on for a Sunday night, beautiful night out at Evergreen as the shadows. As we're going to say that about ready to take this thing over. A little bit of sunlight on the back stretch. Yeah, you see the good battle right here between the 521 Mike Jensen and the four of Cole Reardon as they come out of turn number four. So currently in fifth is the 521 of Mike Jensen as Cole Reardon's looking for any opportunity trying to go low here out of turn number two, heading down the back stretch, maybe just a little bit a hair faster than the 521 on that back stretch. But uh, Mike Jensen able to close that door out of turn number three into four as they head down the front stretch here once again. But the four just knocking on the door each time they come into turn number one. Colton Price still cranking her out up front. Dylan Bewald, who has just had a whale of an experience out here this afternoon and, and evening in a car completely foreign to him. And it, I, I remember telling after, you know, it was all said and done, this was probably a blessing in disguise for Dylan and his team. When you get into a different car and you've got a whole different philosophy of preparation and whatnot and then to find out man maybe i can adapt this to to the 29 they're both volkswagens um, so they have that going for them but that may be the only thing that's a similarity <laughs> between those two cars you know the human beings are what they are and and everybody likes something different and that barber with his gazillion years of experience on three eights in a becu nascar mini stock he can you know, he can set up a car and Bill, it'll be neat to see how Dylan going forward in his car, what the improvements are going to be. You know, and, and you talked earlier about Nat and Amy Barber, and, and it just reminds me one of the more special stories that we've had, and it's every single week out here at Evergreen Speedway. You hear all of these drivers talk about it's not just them that, you know, is enables them to be able to come out with a car every Saturday night, but it's such a huge family dynamic that is everybody's pitching in. They have other drivers that are helping pitch in, and obviously with Dylan Bewald having Nat Barber say you can drive his car, but just so cool to see the kind of family dynamic that this racetrack has and all the people that come around all of these drivers to help support them and, and get them out here each week. Yeah, and uh, again, props to Lyndon Smith in that number 53 car, the, the white Volkswagen, uh, that is right there in your frame. I tell you, that car just, I like that one a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to have something like that to come out and race, and that and that's the type of car you can put that on any type of job. But that'd be so much fun on a road course. Oh, yeah. Put that on the Hornet road course. Oh, yeah. Pick me, pick me, I'll do it. All right, great battle here. Cole Reardon and Cam Iverson in the 10, as we saw Cole Reardon able to get by the 521 of Mike Jensen. So currently in fifth is uh, the 521 of Mike Jensen. Cole Reardon in fourth, 
And now passing by the 10 of Cam Iverson. So trying to jump up into third place as the four able to do so as they come out of turn number four and head down the front stretch. Now 11 laps remaining in tonight's BECU mini stock main event. There he goes. You can see the number four car of Cole Reardon as he took over that third spot. Dylan Bewald in the 97 in second spot. Colton Price, there he goes. Boy, it's like he did in the heat race. Once he gets, and I know I made this comment before, it's you hear on the big NASCAR shows, man, once I got into clean air, that thing just flew, right? And it, it same applies here. It, it may not seem like it. Obviously, they're not, you know, <laughs> the horsepower or the wheelbase or any of that. But, man, I tell you, that thing just gets out front, and he just checks out. So another great job by the 14 of Colton Price. And, again, props to Dylan Bewald. He, uh, I remember when he got his first wins quite a few years ago in that number 29 car. It, it well, wasn't a fluke. I mean, he definitely deserved it, and I know he'd been wanting another one. Uh, it'd been a long time in between uh, victory podiums for the 29 car, but, man, he sure looks good in that 97. That's a good fit. Yeah, you know, I was just going to say, I think that Dylan Bewald is going to try and talk Nat Barber out of driving that 97. He's looking so sharp, and they're running currently second behind the 14 of Colton Price as we go back up to your leader just passing by the 7 of Cassidy Sunholm out of turn number 2 down the back stretch coming into turn number three. But, uh, yeah, I can't say enough nice things about Colton Price and what kind of things he's been able to do out at Evergreen Speedway this season as they come across with six laps now remaining. Yeah, the answer to your question is that all depends on how much fun they had camping. <laughs> 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 they had a great time, and it might be a, 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 a temporary uh, on loan uh, type of deal with uh, b Wald and that number 97, but Nat just absolutely loves being out here and competing, so I don't think that is going to happen. But again, the, the opportunity for Dylan to get into another car and to find out how that thing handles and what it feels like, because that's, you know, I, I've always kind of been a believer that's 80% of this is, is knowing what the car is trying to tell you by how it feels, and you feel it in every part of your body. And uh, he's definitely been on quite the learning curve and running well, too. Well, if this one remains under green for four laps remaining, I, I think that uh, Colton Price might be able to finish the race with three wheels instead of four as he's about <laughs> two two corners ahead now as we look back on Dylan B. Wall driving that 97 and Cole Reardon trying to challenge that 97 car driven by B. Wald as they come into turn number one now. So we'll see if the four is able to work low, and it looks like he is, but uh, Ooh, yeah. getting awful close there to the 97 driven by Dylan B. Wald. Yeah, B. Wald got a great run off the top of turn number two that time. That might have been all it took to keep that number two position for B. Wald as they come across two laps to go. They'll see the white flag next time thrown by our flag man, John Peterson, really, really well. John just did a great job tonight. His flags were so crisp, and they were so tight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he always puts on a show. He's always fun to watch. Yes, he is. All right, there he is, one to go. White flag out for the uh, second place car, Dylan, B or uh, excuse me, Colton Price. So far ahead, the camera can't even catch him, but they do. There he is right now. And another win for the 14 of Colton Price. Checkered flag flying, and around comes the, come on, John. There it is, number 97. <laughs> and the <laughs> uh, charging Cole Reardon in that number, and the number four car for the third place. So we'll bring him up to the Angel of the Winds platform as the uh, rest of the field finishes up the race. There goes Lyndon Smith and my Volkswagen there, the number 53. And uh, up to the Angel of the Winds platform for our top three, Price, Bewald, and Reardon. First off, Colton, I, I love the hair tonight. I love the mustache. You're just looking sharp tonight. Yeah, I don't know. I cut it every once in a while when it gets annoying, and I figured, you know, why the heck not? I like it. So you're leading this BECU mini stock division first in points. This only just continues to help your cause tonight. You had a great race out there. I think without those cautions, you might have lapped everybody. You were just cruising. Yeah, I uh, had to put it in kind of cruise control there towards the end. The car started getting hot. We got a heating issue, and I'm trying to get figured out. I've done just about as much as I can, but uh, we'll get it figured out, and it'll be good for the rest of the year. I just hope to keep this streak going and win number three. This is awesome. So do you think you've kind of figured out things that are happening maybe with the 14? Because we've seen Lane Sunholm out here. It's been really fun to watch you two go back and forth. We didn't see Lane out here, obviously, tonight, but you had a great victory. What can we expect the next time we see you and Lane racing side by side? Uh, 
to be honest, I told him today when he walked up to me in the pits and said he had a mechanical issue, I said, I'm not sad. <laughs> and he just chuckled. It's all in good fun. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. We need to get some more speed in our car to figure it out and uh, hopefully go door to door with him and sneak one away from him for the, towards the end of the year. I know you have a lot of people out here supporting you. That's a beautiful 14 card. Tell us who helped you get it here tonight. Uh, I got to thank Nat and Amy Barber. Without them, it wouldn't be possible. It's their car. Um, I just get the privilege to drive it. Uh, rock solid trucking for coming on board, paying for tires this year. Uh, my beautiful girlfriend for all the support and all the weekends I have to go work on the race car. She puts up with it. I love her. But um, everybody at FTG, um, Race Against Child Abuse, Black Bag Motors, Jamie Thomas builds the best Volkswagen motors out there. Um, friends and family. I got a lot of friends and family that showed up today. I love all you guys. It uh, means a lot. And uh, I'm just glad to see the fans back. That's, that's the biggest thing. So first obvious question. Tell us what happened to the 29 and how you got into Nat Barber's 97 tonight. Yeah, so that's all thanks to Nat and Amy for helping me out. Um, what happened, we broke our car in the second practice session, and Nat's out of town, and he told me he, we could use our car if we needed it, so hopped in the truck and trailer, drove down there, and grabbed the car from his house. <laughs> so it was such a great finish tonight. Driving the 97, are you going to have to tell Nat, hey, I'm going to take it for the rest of the season for you? No, we'll get our car figured back out, and we'll get back out here and get that one on the podium. That's the real goal. <laughs> so you have a lot to people to thank. you got to thank people for the 29 and maybe people for the 97. Tell us who helped you get here tonight. So a big thanks to my dad for putting all the hard work in that 29 car, and we will figure it out, and it's going to be fast, just a matter of time. You have to say a huge thank you to Nat, Amy, Ben, Colton, everybody at FTG Racing, Racers Against Child Abuse, Puget Sound Auto Repair, and big shout out to my brother for always coming in clutch every time he comes to the races with his truck, trailer, whatever parts he needs. Shout out to my girlfriend, who's somewhere over here. I know she is. <laughs> and and her mom and dad and all my friends that came out to watch and stuff so yeah a lot of people that help and support and it's awesome cool i think if there was maybe about five more laps we might be seeing a different person on top of this podium you were cruising out there looking so sharp tonight yeah the car was pretty good i broke in practice and uh, had to thrash it back together and it come out better than i thought it was gonna <laughs> Ran a great race tonight. Great to see you on top of the podium as you're doing well in this division so far. It all started with that battle for fifth between you and Mike Jensen. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, I love Marks and Mike Jensen. Me and him always keep it real clean. Uh, he's got a fast car, and uh, yeah, I knew I had to get him on the inside because I wasn't going around him on the out. <laughs> Tell us about the sponsors you need to thank for being out here tonight. Uh, first off, I need we need to thank uh, all the fans. Thanks for being out here. Uh, BECU for sponsoring our class. Happy Cookies and Cakes, Above and Beyond Design and Construction, uh, J2 Racing Dot Parts, and uh, Native Coin. <laughs> 